Air Terrainiacs, Mel the Terrain Shooter, back in the studio and back with the Terrain Lab for you. Now, a, a, a little while ago, at the start of the D-Day board, the guys from the Hot Wire Foam Factory got in touch and they said, we want to send you some tools. Now, I'd already pretty much got all their tools, so they only really sent me one. Yeah, but along with what they sent me, yeah, they sent me a load of their other products, which are the exterior coating, no, the, the interior foam coatings, the exterior coatings, the Create Coat, Bounce, Boost, Styro Goo, yeah, all sorts of wonderful stuff. And I'll be honest with you, when it arrived, yeah, I was a bit like, ugh, okay, so why? Well, it's just posh terrain gloop, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that was my opinion, okay? But, I got myself into a bit of a, a fix, yeah? Got myself behind when I was doing the massive, what you call it, uh, frost spray board for the guys over at Foreground and at Osprey and at North Star. Yeah, uh, that was the table I did for Saloon. And as part of that process, I needed to get a hard coat on expanded polystyrene. I had a tub of the exterior, of the interior coat, and I just thought, what the hell, yeah, let's give it a go. And I was really impressed with the results, yeah, which just sort of opened my eyes and made me realise, you know, perhaps a little bit arrogant with the, with the terrain building there, Mel. You know what I mean, yeah? Judge each product on its benefits. Now, I looked at the costings, and to be perfectly honest, yeah, considering one tub of the interior coat, I've got a big one because I used the full interior tub that they sent me, yeah, on the Salute board, and so they sent me some more. But one tub did that entire table. Yeah, and there's some big hills in that table. There's some really big hills in that table. So, and I looked at the price, and it's about eight pound. Yeah, so that's, that's reasonable as a one-off. Yeah, especially if it guarantees good results. I saw good results. So, I decided it's time for a terrain lab. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this against various materials, or we're just gonna have a good nose on it and see where it stands, you know what I mean? Right, let me take you to the bench and I'll explain what we're going to be doing, how we're going to be doing it, and we'll crack on, yeah? Come on. Right, guys, first barrage of tests. Now, the first thing I want to look at is their glues. Now, they've got this styro glue, yeah? And then they've got this foam fusion. And best way to describe them is pretty good polystyrene glue. Polystyrene glue? Yeah, pretty amazing polystyrene glue. Or well, that's the way it's pitched, yeah, but... You know, we're here to find out. Now, our typical glue that we use when we're doing polystyrene is our good old PVA. Now, PVA comes with a bit of a problem where when you cut it, it doesn't work well with hot wire tools and you can often leave a glue line, which can be quite challenging to get rid of. Yeah, so when you're doing large hills and stuff like that, trying to get rid of that those horizontal lines where the sheets are layered can be a bit of a nightmare. So I'm quite interested to see how these do because these are pitched as hot tool cuttable. Yeah, so, theoretically, it could be a solution to that problem. So, first and foremost, we need to just see how they do with glues. Okay, so, starting with this one, yeah, we're gonna start with PVA, and all I'm gonna do is, when it comes out, come on, yeah. Thin line, straight at the middle. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, and all I'm going to do is whack this on, smooth it out, yeah, and leave that there. So that should stick nice and good for us. Yeah, so tomorrow, when it's fully dried, we'll be able to cut it and see. Now we're going to do the same with the other two. So we've got the styro glue, and we need to make sure we track which is it, which. So that's PVA, mm, smart man. Right, the styro glue. Now this is instant tack. Yeah, so it should tack pretty quick. It reckons, what you call it? Needs about 12 hours for full sticking, whereas this one, yeah, needs 12 hours, yeah. The styro goo seems to say that it's tacky quicker, which would imply that you can work quicker, but they both need 12 hours. So let's whack some of this on. So what's this like? Yeah, let's come out. And it comes out quite thick. It's more like a gel. Yeah, then our liquid, which is good, because that's control, it's not going to run everywhere. It doesn't seem to actually melt or do anything with the actual polystyrene. So if I bring that up to the camera, yeah. It's about the same amount that, uh, of, that we did with the PVA, so we'll put that on. It feels thicker, a lot thicker. 
Oh yeah, it is gooey, isn't it? Right. Give it a good push down. And we'll whack that one with that. Right, and then we're going to do the final one with the foam fusion. Okay, so, let's see how this pours out. A lot more liquidy. A lot more liquidy. Yeah, I know my hand's getting in the way. There you go. Yeah. So you see how it wants to run. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be affecting the foam as such. Actually it does. It's sitting in a little. Let's have a play. Alright. It's not molten it or anything like that. It's not as tacky as the, as the styro glue. Yeah. So let's give it a good squeeze. Yeah. Out of all of them, it is the styro glue that that watch glue seems to tack better initially. Yeah. But like we say, what we're really interested in isn't how quickly we can glue because we've got all sorts of glues and stuff like that that we can use on polystyrene. Yeah, we're interested in how well it cuts with a hot wire tool because that's the important thing. Yeah, that's where this stuff is really going to come in for us. So we've got those three done. Next thing I've got to do is pretty much put them to one side, let them dry for 12 hours. So we'll pick those up in the morning and we'll cut through them and we'll look at them then. So, uh, Skip to the future. Right, 24 hours in, all dry, time to give them a test. Now, quick note, the styro glue, that did tack really quickly. You know, it was firmer, a lot quicker than the other two. Yeah, I don't know how much of a use in terrain building that is, but it's handy to know if, you know, you, you've got a quick job and you need something to sort of like really hammer it. Yeah, but what we're more interested in, as I said before, is how well they cut. Now, we've got our controller, PVA, we've got a hot wire cutter, very quickly. You know, PVA, solid, as I'd expect it. I don't want to put too much in this because I don't want to break it because I want to cut it. Yeah, but, you know, as we expected. So, cut down. Yes, you're really watching a man cut polystyrene. Right, there's the PVA. And then it cuts through. What was that, about two, three seconds stop? Yeah. And if I bring it up to the camera, yeah, you can see that definitive line there, you know what I mean, where the glue. And that's the line that we struggle with, because when we sand and we engrave and we do things like that, yeah, it sort of pops out and it catches when you dry brush, which makes it really obvious, and it, it catches washes, yeah, which is why we're interested in how well this styro glue and this foam fusion do. So, first off, how tough is it? I don't want to break it. Uh, feels like the PVA's got a better glue, but I think, do you remember when the styro glue came out and it was more like a gel? I think the reason for that is, if I bring it up, yeah, it's only sort of glued where the gel was, whereas the PVA, because it's a liquid, spread across. So I think feeling them, if that was the same spread as the PVA, this would probably be stronger. It's just, it's gone down as a, a gel and it's a single line. So I don't think it's as strong. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a stronger glue, but because it's a gel, it doesn't cover as much. So it doesn't have as much surface area to grip to. Okay, that's how I'm sticking with that one. Right, let's see how it cuts. Come on, baby. Come on. We want to see the results for this, don't we? A little bit quicker than the PVA. So it's a lot more cuttable, but then again, it could be because it's a reduced surface area. Let's have a look at the line. Definitely reduced. I mean, I can still perceive it just, but nowhere near the PVA. So it's definite, a definite improvement. Oh, look, it comes apart as a. I've seen, you know, now we've cut it, we can break it. It's still tacky. So it's holding, but it's still tacky. 
Clara glue. How, how long took for this dry? Full adhesion in 12 hours. Well, it did stick, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, but surfaces of the, you see, it hasn't melted them as such. I think that's why we've probably got a better cut with it. Okay, that's interesting to know. I mean, it did stick it. Yeah, well, let's be clear on that. That was nice and firm. It was only when I le levered it off. I'm not sure whether that will stick more over time or whether that will, uh, whether that will stay tacky. Hmm. Hot wire phone factory. If you're watching this, which you probably will, in the comments, yeah. Quite curious about that. Right, foam fusion, that last one. Okay. Now this is permeates the foam and bonds permanently. Yeah. Can be cut with hot wire tools. Cutting may be slowed. 12 hours to dry, so it's had plenty of time. Okay, right. We didn't check how tough it was, did we? We'll do that afterwards. Don't worry. All right, here we go. That was longer than PVA. Okay. So, foam fusion, there you go. Yeah. Still wet on the inside. I wouldn't say the line is pronounced, but it is still wet. Let's pop it open, let's see what it's done to the foam. I mean, it's a good foam. It appears, yeah, if you look at that, do you see how around the edge, okay, we've got this melted fixed bit. So where it's had contact with air, it's dried with no problem whatsoever, but internally, yeah, it's got the same situation as PVA. Yeah, sorry guys. Yeah, same situation as PVA where it needs to get the air to it to dry. Okay, once again, I'm assuming much like PVA, this will dry over time. And, I mean, it's a pretty steady bond. Do you know what? I'm genuinely not sure. Now, I have a reputation for saying it as I see it as it sits before us, yeah. And I do like the hot wire foam factory people and I do like the tools. But I'm not seeing enough, yeah, for... Let's have a look how, how much the PVA's. See, the PVA's in the same situation, dried around the edges. Yeah, strong. Uh, I don't know, guys. I don't know, guys. There is definite reduction in that line, which is what we were after. Uh, I'm assuming that, like much like PVA, they will cure over time as air permeates. Don't know if they're completely worth it, though, to be perfectly honest. I don't know if I would spend the money on them. I think... To be perfectly honest, if I was doing a large piece and I knew I'd have exposed gap lines, yeah, then yeah, I probably would use it, yeah. As a general replacement for PVA working with foam, I don't think the cost justify, you know, the benefits cost justify the need. But that's my personal opinion because that's a cost basis, okay? So... Hey ho, what can I say guys, you know what I mean, we said we'd look at it honestly and nah, I'm not completely sold on these, to be perfectly honest. I may come back in the future and change my mind, but based on these quick tests, yeah. Alright then, alright, let's move on. Okay guys, that's the glues done and now it's time to look at the foam coats. Now their bog standard foam coat is the one that I use for the big salute table, for the frost grave table, yeah. Uh, and so I haven't got a proper tub of that, I've just got a big box with a sack in it, so I can't show you the tub, because I've thrown it, yeah, but basically you mix it at a 3 to 1 ratio, okay, are uh, 3 parts powder, 1 part high quality H2O, water, any sort of water, yeah, on top of that you can mix up to 50% latex paint, and when the Americans say latex paint, what they mean is emulsion interior wall paint, 
Okay, I'm not going to do that, I just want to see how the coating goes. Now when I used this last, I mixed it with so, just some bog standard grit that I always use for basing and coated on that. So I haven't used it as a neat coat, so I'm quite interested to see how well it works. Now I've carved myself a little bit of polystyrene there, yeah, and as you can see I've got a bit of a rocky rock face, really cheap and easy, yeah, and then I've done some brick work on the top. And what I want to do is, I just want to give it a coat and just have a look at what it does. Now I'm only going to coat sort of like two thirds of it, okay? So first off, let's mix this up. Yeah, and I need about a third water. About there, All right? So give it a mix. Back in a sec. Right. All mixed up and that's what we're looking at, like a, a thin liquid. Now it's got a set time of about 10 minutes, so I've got 10 minutes to work with it. Like I said, you can extend that by mixing it with a bit of paint. Yeah, so let's see what we've got. Okay, so a bit of a brush. Yeah, let's give it a coat. Yeah, and I'm pushing it into the edges, and making sure it gets a good coat without soaking it, so to speak. That flood in it. I've got a hair on there. Lots of like kezzes. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. And I'm going to do two thirds of this. Yeah. I'll crack on. So there we have it. Yeah, I've given it a good coat across two thirds. I'm not sure how well you can see that on the camera, but hopefully it's coming through okay. Yeah, next job is just to leave this now for, for sort of 12 hours, so till morning, so we can sort of assess it then. So I'm gonna put this up, but we are not done with the foam coat. There's a couple other little experiments I wanna do with it, so I'll get myself set up right now. Okay, so. Next batch of experiments, our foam coat is drying there quite well. Well, it's not drying, it's still wet, but it's there. Yeah, there's a couple of other things I wanna test. Now, they do this uh, coarse grit, yeah, for that works specifically with, yeah, the foam coat, and it's a bit strange. It's not like normal grit. Now, I used normal grit on the last one, so I'm quite interested in seeing what the difference is with this. On top of that, we've got their boost. Now, I know that this is sort of an accelerant, Okay, so I've come across this before. It worked really well when I was doing the salute board, so we'll give it a little bit of a play. I'm not sure how much the benefit there is out of playing out of that, but what I do want to play with is bounce. This makes polystyrene like rubber. Now, it's not really applicable to terrain building, to terrain building, <laughs> yeah, but quite curious, you know what I mean? Yeah, so we'll have a play with that. But first, the grit. So, I've got the stuff that I mixed up for our original coating. Yeah, and I'm just gonna pour some grit in. Yeah, and give it a stir. See what it comes out like. Yeah. Yeah, a bit more, I think. Da -da -da. Okay, so give it a good mix. Yeah, it's going nice and sloppy now. Yeah, you can sort of see. Right, let's get that on the brush and let's get one of these coated up with our grit. Yeah, and then we can have a look at, you know, what effect it has. So. A um, bit of painting on polystyrene. Look at that for a blob. Yeah. Now, as I said, I've used this before yeah, with normal grit, and the result was really good. So I'm quite interested in seeing how this pans out. I must admit, when I did it with before, I just did it with my hand. It was a lot easier than with a brush. And I'll be honest with you, I'm getting that sort of feeling now with this. Yeah, but we'll crack on. And there you are. It's a bit messy, but it is all done. Okay, now I've been thinking while I've been doing this, I'm not gonna bother with the boost, and I'll tell you why. Yeah, I already know that this works, okay? It did boost when I did the salute board, but video-wise, it doesn't really show anything. There's nothing I can sort of show, yeah? It, because it just speeds it up. It'll be dry by tomorrow morning anyway, yeah? So, 
We'll put that to one side and we'll use one of these as our test group. So, we'll put that messy one down there. Yuck. Yeah, put a brush in there, see if we can clean that off. And yeah, clean up our mess. I've seen this stuff. It's already setting. Already setting. I do like this stuff. Okay, and the last one that I want to try very quickly, yeah, is bounce. Okay, so that's this stuff. Now, we've got a bit. I've got some powder already in. Yeah, instructions are pretty much the same, you know. Mix it. Now, they say you should replace the water. Mix all-purpose foam coat into undilute bounce bounce to the desired thickness. So I'm assuming that all we do is we mix, we, we swap this for the water. Yeah, that's what I'm reading it as. I might have it completely wrong, and if I have, <laughs> sorry. So, put a little in there. Give it a stir. Bit more. I'll stir this up. So, all mixed up, and we've got a thickness sort of like that. Yeah. Not a, a splodge, but it's still a little bit liquidy. It is running off our stick, but it's thick enough. Right, brush again. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to give this a coating. Yeah, and we'll see if it bounces. Quite curious on this one. It's got no relevance to terrain building, but if I can make rocks that bounce, I can throw them at the kids. <laughs> I know I'm awful, aren't I? Right, so yeah. It goes on quite sticky. The other ones were far wetter than this, but this does actually have a rubber feel to it. Yeah, it does actually. It's not running all over the place. It's sort of going down and going tacky. They reckon, what you call it? Set time 10 to 30 minutes, dries in six hours. So it's a quick dry compared to the other products. Right, I'll just carry on coating this. So there we have it. Yeah, all coated up. It's gone on liquidy, but definitely thicker and definitely with sort of that rubber feel to it as it goes on. Doesn't feel like it's been running off anywhere. Okay, so we've got our standard foam coat on our, e on our extruded polystyrene. We've got a grit foam coat on our expanded polystyrene. We've got our controlled polystyrene because we don't need really need to test the boost. And then we've got our bounce. Okay, so that pretty much covers it for their standard coat. All we need to do now is let it dry and have a look at the results, guys. Right, 24 hours in, okay, and this is our foam coat. Yeah, now looking at the brickwork, okay, you can see some gaps and a couple of blobs. That's my brushwork, that's not the stuff itself because we've got a nice solid coating on a few of the pieces where I actually did spend the time and rubbed it in. I really like it. First off, yeah, it's giving it a gritty texture. Yeah, I really, and it's very much like stone. Yeah, whilst at the same time, it's gone in sort of smoother in the creases, which makes that look like mortar. Yeah, and with that in mind, it, this stone texture is definitely what the coating's done, not what what's on the, on the polystyrene. I really like that. The coating itself is nice and hard. Yeah, let's try and get my nail in it. I am going to get my nail in it because it's only foam, but yeah, there's a resistance to that. Yeah, because I mean, otherwise, it going dead easy. Yeah. Okay. It comes down to the actual rock surface. It's really nice. I mean, in all honesty, I like that. That grittiness. I mean, okay, I've got the blobs on it. That's my brushwork, as we said. Yeah, but the grittiness really does help with the rock texture. Yeah, now this is just the basic foam coat without any grit. When I did the uh, frost grade board, yeah, we used grit on it, but I can see how work using with this and getting a decent coat on it over a high density works really well. Okay, so I think confirming going in, I like the foam coat, I do like it. You are wrong to be ignorant, Bose. I mean, those points are really tough. Really. Yeah. Obviously I've got to break a bit, I'm hammering it, aren't I? 
Yeah, foam coat, we like that. Right, not only did we look at the foam coat, yeah, you see, I like that, that's an easy decision. Not like the glue. Yeah, uh, right. They're coarse and, and watch your fine medium grit. Okay, now, strengthens foam coat. And I was working on the assumption that this has got something in it. Yeah, definitely harder, definitely harder. Now, if I bring it up, yeah, you can see it has got that really gritty texture. There's a bit of blobbing. Yeah, once again, my brushwork letting it pool and that sort of stuff. But overall, considering this is, you know, really soft expanded foam, that's a really nice hard covering. Whether it is better, yeah, than just using any old grit. I don't know. I think we may need some more tests on that. I mean, where it's gone in on a thick coat, it is really hard. Let me break that off. Yeah, really hard. Not sure, 50-50 maybe. I'll reserve judgment on that one. Uh, I think if I'm honest, yeah, grit is grit. This might have some super duper extra bonus, but I'm not, I'm not really seeing it, yeah. Personally, I'd give the grit a miss and just go with normal grit, because I've done it with normal grit and the results are equally as good Equally as tough. Hmm. Have to see. More experiments with that stuff, I think. Okay, right. Bounce. Now, this is the latex covering. This is the rubberized covering. And it does. It didn't bounce. I've got to do that again, haven't I? It bounced a little. But it's not cracking. Okay, I'm not really sure of the application in terrain building for this, but I mean, if you want to make some boulders and throw them at the kids, I think you're on for a winner with this one. I might just do that. I might make a big rock, yeah? And throw it out the window at one of the kids and scare the hell out of them. Please don't report me to social services. But no, that's... I mean, it's not cracking at all. And this is foam coat. This was, this was this stuff added to this stuff, which is nice and tough. And it's got a really tough solid, but it's not cracking. And it is. I mean, typically you can rip this stuff easy. I like that. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure what our application for it in terrain making it would be. Yeah, but I really like that. If you want to make anything rubber out of polystyrene, out of, out of expanded polystyrene. <laughs> yeah, bounce. We love that. We love that a lot. So that's a foam coat. Okay, well, not a foam coat. That's our standard foam coat. Yeah, we like it. We like it a lot. Yeah, not sure about their specialist grit. Yeah, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, the bounce we love, and that was just our control piece. Yeah, but like I say, this, the basic coat, really like that, really like that. Right, let's have a look at the other bits. Right guys, that's their bog standard coat done. What we're gonna do now is have a look at two last products, and I'm not sure how they fit into terrain building. First, we've got their exterior foam coat, yeah, which is this. Now, the special thing about this is it's supposed to work with all sorts of effects. Yeah, but more importantly, it's supposed to be water resistant, fire resistant, and basically, it's for doing this sort of stuff and having it outside. Yeah, now, I don't know what sort of terrain we have outside, but, you know, you might have a use for it. Now, on the other side, yeah, we've got their Create Coat, yeah? And this is like a sculpting paste. I've never played with it. I don't know what it does. So we're just gonna have a little play at the end and just figure that out. So first off, Exterior Coat. Now, this is a mix of one part to three parts, again, yeah? This, what you call it, dries up to 24 hours to 48 hours. So a bit longer than the, the other one. So where's that boost? There's the boost. Yeah, da -da 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 yeah. Can you? I'm wondering whether you can use boost with it. Mixing one part, one part, look, applying, da -da -da -da, finishing, assembly. 
It doesn't say, so I'm not going to risk it. Yeah, you probably can and check the website, but I ain't going to risk it. I'm not going to knacker this up. Yeah, I just, especially because I just want to see what the coating's like. So, mix in a third as before. Yeah, yeah, me old sticky. Yeah, and give it a stir. Oh, it's weird. Different colour. Definitely thicker. It's almost like it's got a bit of texture in it, to be truthful. Here, have a look at that. Do you see that? Like it's got texture in it already. We will have to have a look, won't we? I don't know what it is. I don't know the chemical makeup of any of these things, to be perfectly honest. So let's get our brush. We'll give this a bit of a coating with our exterior coat. Yeah, and if it is fire retardant, we'll put a lighter under it once it's dried and actually check it out. I think that's the easiest way of testing these things. And then if it catches fire, we'll pour water over to see if it's water resistant. <laughs> You've got to love terrain labs, haven't you? Yeah, so I'm just going to give this a bit of a coat. So there we have it, guys. Yeah, all coated. I've left a little bit at the bottom just to hold it by. Yeah, so interesting texture. Definitely got a bitty texture already in it. Yeah, I'm interested to see what this does, so to speak. So we'll put that up to dry and we will see tomorrow. Now that should take 24, 48 hours to dry because it's external. So we'll have a look at it tomorrow. We should be okay. Now if I'm going to very quickly wipe this off because we need one last one. Yeah, which is, yeah, Ooh. making a mess there, Bosey. You do love these Terrain Lab videos. The, the thing I love about Terrain Lab videos is I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I do know what I'm doing. I do know the experiments, but I don't know how they're going to come out or anything like that or where, what tangents we're going to go off on. And I love exploring terrain stuff. Right, this is mixing two parts water to five parts powder until you have a smooth paste. Yeah, as before... Yeah, I've already put some in. We will get our high quality H2O. Yeah. That's about two parts of what's already in there. I'll give that a stir. But it's nowhere near two parts of what was already in there. A bit more. Now this is supposed to be a sculpting paste. Yeah. So I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with it. So what I'm going to do is, it's got the same sort of consistency as the acrylic gels that we use for the seascape. So I've got a bit of polystyrene here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some, I'm going to dump it out. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to blob it on here and see what it does. You're supposed to be able to sculpt it in all sorts, create coat. Adheres to polystyrene foams, foam coat, and adds that finely dazzling finish it. Coat it, smooth it, texture it, sand it, stain it, tint it. Two parts water applied, did a trial. Set time 30 minutes, harden one to two hours, maximum strength and bond in 24 hours. And a rock hard like cement coating, used directly on foam or as a finish for all purpose. Compatible with boost and grit, perfect base for creating natural tints with acid stains or stain fast. Well, I've got some of the stain fast, but we're going to look at that in a separate. So this is for creating a coat. So let's let's give it a coat. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see if I can get some detail. And at the same time, what I want to see yeah, is how well it stands up to... Yeah, be applied in a thin coat. Yeah, is it like a super, super tough? All I'm thinking is tournament terrain and stuff like that. Will it be applicable? So, it goes on as a splodge. Yeah, I haven't really got a rocky surface on this one to test it on. Yeah, but we'll give it a go. So, we'll whack it on there. Yeah, and we've left it sculpted on there. Yeah, let's stipple that a bit. Let's see if it holds the stippling as well. Mm. 
there we go right that's what I've got on top that's what I've got on the side we're giving that a bit of a coating to see how hard that goes yeah and whether it's a super super duper coating perfect for like terrain and kiddie stuff yeah so I'm interested in seeing how that plays out so that's the cre Eww, got up my fingers. That's the create coat. That's the exterior foam coat. We've done all the other coatings, and other than their stain fast, which to be perfect honest, I need to have more of a play out. Yeah, that covers all the products. All we've got to do is see how these t turn out. So let's have a look, eh? Right, all dry. Let's have a look at them. Right, first off, yeah, exterior foam coat. Now this is their stuff that is supposed to be for outdoors. Yeah, it's supposed to be waterproof. It doesn't feel as hard as the standard foam coat, you know what I mean? But then again, that could simply be because the last time I felt a standard foam coat with this it had grit in it, so it could be that. Yeah, it has got a rocky texture. And remember when I said it, it looks like it's got grit in it? Yeah, now nothing has been added to that. Yeah, but it's a lovely rocky texture. Really nice. Really, really nice. Now, it's supposed to be waterproof. Yeah, so I want to see how resistant to water it is. Now, if it is waterproof, water shouldn't soak into it. It should, should sort of sit on it like a bubble. Which it does. Yeah, and nothing's coming off. Yeah, you like that? Not soundable or paintable, da -da. is it waterproof? It seems it. That surface effect protects me. It's fire resistant. <laughs> in for a penny, in for a pound, eh? Where's my lighter? There it is. Right, right here. Alright, so it's fire resistant. Let's have a look at that. I mean, it's not. <laughs> We've covered fire and terrain in before. If someone's setting the... Terrain does not spontaneously ignite. So if terrain catches fire, there are two situations. One, yeah, everything around the terrain is on fire, in which case, run. Two, someone is letting fire, setting fire to your terrain, in which case, hit them. Yeah? Right. But if you ever wanted to fireproof your terrain, let's have a look. Okay, it's melting underneath. Ow. Okay, that's interesting. Right, it hasn't caught fire, yeah, first off, yeah, but as you would expect, yeah, the heat has melted the polystyrene underneath. Okay, now, no more, that doesn't mean it's going to make more flames. I'm not suggesting this is a safety thing or anything like that, and I don't know enough about what to a fire resistant, but that's quite interesting. It doesn't catch fire. You know what I'm like. All right. Not much more we can say on that, because it's exterior coat. It's not what we particularly use. Okay, right, let's have a look at the create coat. Now, damn, that's tough. Bloody hell. Oh, do you hear that crack? Okay, now you can mix this stuff up thicker, you can sculpt it when it goes on. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I was looking at it, yeah, and I was looking at it like that, yeah, which is what our stippling went to. So we stippled, yeah, it softened a little and smoothed out in a few places. Yeah, I could have gone back in when that was, what you call it, when that was setting and re-stippled, you know, and I could have sculpted things in, yeah, but I went home instead, yeah, and then it's cured overnight, yeah. But that's really hard. That takes some armor. Brush dry, dry texturing surface before coat sets. Smooth texture whilst drying, sandable, stain or paintable, add grip for a rock like surface. Well, yeah, it, there is no rock like surface on it. You know, it is very much a smooth liquid. Yeah, obviously it can be sculpted and that sort of stuff, like I say, but that is really hard. I can see that being beneficial. You know where I'd, I would have liked to have used that? 
Yeah, remember those crystals I did for the Sega board with the very fine tips that I was worried about getting broken? A bit of that on it would... Because even when it's thin, it's, it's a lot harder than this stuff. A lot. Okay, I can see application for that. Just as like, I'm not saying cover your entire terrain with it, but just for those points where you know those bits are going to get some hammer, you could go in before you put your actual foam coating on. Yeah, do these, put this on to really sort of firm it up and then put your coating on for your rock texture over the top. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, that, that's good. I'd like to say exterior foam coat. Uh, I'm sure it's good. I like the rock texture that comes with it. It doesn't catch on fire. Yeah, it seems to be water resistant and it's pretty firm. Yeah, I would imagine if you add grit to it, it would be firmer. But overall, yeah, I'm sure it, it, it does well for the job it's supposed to do. Create coat, yeah, we like that. We like that a lot. We really like that. Yeah, I like that. Right, let's wrap this up, eh, guys? Right, wrapping it up, guys. Uh, let's have a quick jog through. Okay, on the glues, yeah, the styro glue, tacky pretty early on, the foam fusion, pretty much the same adherence as PVA and slightly better with the cutting, yeah, but not enough to make it a, a, a swap between glues for day-to-day -day stuff. I do think that perhaps if you're doing top-end work and you want to reduce those cut lines as much as possible, yeah, then that's where they sit in and that's where, you know, the expense is worth, you know. Beyond that, day-to-day, -day, mainly terrain making, stick with the PVA guys, I reckon. Yeah, the grit. Uh, couldn't really see any notable benefit over, over using normal grit. And to be perfectly honest, it doesn't sort of surprise me. Now, I might be missing a trick on this, but even if I was, from what I've seen, I can't see, you know, no standard grit is dirt, dirt, it's dirt. <laughs> yeah, whereas, you know, buying grit specifically for doing this. The frugal builder in me, you know. Mm, no, not, not, you haven't sold me on that one. Not sold on that one. Right, moving on. Yeah. Bounce, yeah. Bounce, completely not applicable to terrain building that I can see. But I bloody love this stuff. <laughs> really, I mean, <laughs> bounce. Yeah. I'm going to have some fun with this, genuinely, guys. Yeah, expect me to see, see big, sort of like Star Trek, you know, polystyrene boulders getting thrown about. You know what I mean? I'm seriously, I'm not joking. Yeah, I do like that stuff. And if you come across this video and you're not a terrain builder, and you're looking to do set props or anything like that, and it stands up to the job. Okay? Now, with regards to their boost, yeah, we didn't test this because we didn't need to. Yeah, the terrain labs are to help me establish things I don't know. Yeah, I know this works. Yeah, I've tested it prior when I was doing the salute board, the frost grape board. Yeah, it is a catalyst to whatever, you know, the chemical reaction going on in these coatings is. And it works really well. It does really reduce the drying time. So, yeah, if you're on a quick job, you, you know, time and that sort of thing is an issue. Yeah, I highly recommend Boost. Yeah, moving on. Right. The foam coat. The bog standard foam coat. Right. I owe Art Wire Foam Factory a bit of an apology, yeah, for this. Because, like I say, when they sent me these coatings, I was very much of the attitude of, you taking the mick. Yeah, it's posh terrain loop. No, it isn't. It's a professional coating. Yeah. Now, I would normally go on my high horse about, oh, look at the cost of that, you can buy a bit of PVA, a bit of casting powder, a bit of, bit of filler, some paint, some grit, give it a stir, slap that on. Yeah, actually by the time you've done that, the, uh, one of these tubs is $10, and I know the markets are a bit fluffy right now, but less than like eight quid for a coating, and this did the entire, one of these tubs did the entire table. Yeah, that's an eight quid yeah, to cover all that mountains. You know what I mean? Yeah, that will easily do any terrain set you want. And yeah, like I said at the start, I was well impressed with the finish. So where this sits in is yes, you could buy what you call it, you know, your materials, make a terrain loop, and we'll be looking at terrain loops and that sort of stuff, and there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah, but a couple of extra quid for a one-off project, you know, you're building your terrain table, 
to use a product that I am 100% sure you will be happy with because I am 100% sure that I would be happy with it. Yeah, in fact, you know those fundraisers we were doing to sort of help fund the studio move that we've got to finish? That's what I'm doing it with. Yeah, because I can rely on that coating quite happily with a bit of grit in it. Yeah, so, tell you what, we'll have a bit more of a play with that grit when we do those and we'll do, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll, I'll still have a play. But, foam co coating, one, well, sorry to Hotwire Foam Factory for my prejudice, my terrain building prejudice, uh, and above all, I really like it, highly recommend it. Okay, exterior foam coat. A little bit softer than, the, the, than this foam coat, to be perfectly honest. A natural gritty texture, more than this foam coat. Yeah, doesn't catch fire. I wonder if this does. Back in a sec. No, doesn't catch fire. <laughs> does that sort of melty thing. Anyway, right, so exterior foam coat. Not really our thing, uh, but you know, I'm sure more experienced people out there who do these sort of things will get benefit from it, yeah. I don't think it's worth it for terrain, yeah. Right, create coat, yeah. Bit arrogant with this one, couldn't really see the sort of point. Seeing how tough the bloody stuff is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've got anything in polystyrene that you reckon might get break, might get nudged, yeah. Quick coat of this prior to doing your, your standard foam coat. You're on a winner, guys. You really are on a winner. So that sort of wraps it up. Overall, yeah, there's a couple that we don't really like. There's a couple that aren't suitable, but fundamentally, yeah, Hot Wire Foam Factory Foam Coat, yeah, I highly recommend it, guys. I genuinely do. I recommend it based on its quality. I recommend it based on the results and how, how confident I am in you will get good results with it and I will get good results with it. Yeah, that's, you know, when you're building terrain, the last thing you want to do is put a hard coat on that knackers it and have to, you know what I mean? Yeah, been there, done that. Okay, then finally, yeah, price, it isn't that expensive. It's a couple of extra quid on top of what your normal raw materials would be for a foam coat. And on that basis, you know, if you're a professional terrain builder knocking out terrain all the time, yeah, use your own recipe, guys. Yeah, because you've developed it to be cheap and you can rely on it. If you're doing a one-off set, yeah, don't risk all that hard work for the sake of a couple of quid, yeah. Get some foam coat, yeah, and get a great finish, you know what I mean, yeah. So, mixed bag with this one, guys. Above all, yeah, as all terrain labs, it's about learning, yeah. Sometimes we might do one and find it's all absolutely really naff, yeah. It's the way, this is learning, this is what we do. But above all, I hope you found it useful. Now, as always, yeah, any experience, especially with the train labs, anything you can add to this, and Hot Wire Foam Factory, yeah, in the comments. You know, I've raised my concerns. If you've got answers to them, put them in the comments for, for people to see, yeah. But if you've got an experience, yeah, throw those in. And also, you know, if you've got any other experience of, you know, coatings in general and that sort of stuff, you know, always throw them in because it's another tangent for us to explore. Yeah, obviously like it, share it, all those sort of things. And above all, guys, yeah, if you really do like the channel, I've got a sidestep for this, I've got a sidestep now, yeah, please consider the patron thing, yeah. This is my dream job, helping you guys, getting answers for you guys, and showing you guys how to build better terrain is my dream job. Look at the smile on my face. I'm in my first studio. It's going really well, and I couldn't have got here without your support. So please, guys, if you really do like this, Consider that one dollar thing, it's only a dollar, it's not even a quid. Yeah, it can't even buy you a pork pie, and it certainly can't buy you a coffee or a pint. But it can help me help you guys with your terrain. And if you're not into that, remember, it's always the one-off PayPal's, you know what I mean? Yeah, completely understand, and you know, it's there, it's in the description. And I appreciate it, guys, I really do. Right, more videos coming soon, because I'm really productive in here. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Ta-ra.